That was my hair. Yeah. All right, cool. What's up, everybody? Today on Faux Show Moto, we are going to be converting a 2015 Range Rover Sport HSE into a fully blacked out sex machine. We're going to be doing rims and tires. We're doing the front grille, fog lights, side vents, hood vents, trim along the tailgate. We're going to be blacking out all the emblems. Sit back, watch, and enjoy. Okay, let's go ahead and start with the front grille. We'll get this silver one off and put on a nice blacked out grill. It's gonna look super sharp. There's four Phillips head screws across the top. Loosen those up, take out the uh, retaining clips, and then there's basically just a good yank. You gotta give it, it almost feels like you're breaking the grill, but that'll pull it out. There's no harm in using power tools to remove screws on a vehicle, but when it comes to putting it back together, always go back to hand tools you want to avoid that oh no and continue with that faux show. Technically you don't even need to take the screws out all the way and you'll end up being able to take out these pressure clips with the screws still part way in there. I like to take it out make sure nothing's stripped and nothing's breaking. Those are out. Nice little push, nice little pull. One on that side, let's get one on that side and we're good to go. Always wanna try and wipe it up and clean it a little bit too in between steps. Now that we have the factory grill out, we're gonna go ahead and just reverse those quick steps and put the new grill in. Oh show. Over, everything lines up just the same as on the factory one. We got four pressure clips here, two, three, four. They go in here, 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 and here. And then you reuse your factory hardware to put it back on. That clicking noise is delicious. Just gonna clean that hardware a bit before we put it back on. Always try and go finger tight first. Yeah, buddy. Next, we're gonna go ahead and do the hood scoops. The way you get to those is you gotta put the hood up. You remove the heat shield right here. You can feel around a little bit. You just push one pressure clip up and then you should be able to gently work it around like this. Boom, oh show. Take off that boring black and gray. All right, let's break out these black beauties. There is a left and a right, so make certain that you do pull out the correct one. Definitely check it out and make sure everything lines up the same as it did on the factory one. Looks like we're good. All right, so we just gotta line it up and put it in slow. Faux oh, show, sure. onto the side vents. In order to get these off, it's just tabs on here as well. We're gonna come from the top right here, pop that out and go gradually getting the rest of the clips out without breaking them. Gets a little tricky through here. You wanna take your time so you don't snap anything. Again, tidy it up. Now that we did a quick clean, time to put the black one on. Oh, show. Now for the front skid plate. There's four twist screws underneath that need to be removed. I believe you just turn them about a quarter of the way and that'll loosen it up and it should just drop down. And then across the top, basically just sort of clips in.
Once those are out, it just drops down. Oh show. Line her up, stick it in, and faux show. So once you remove these, it's a quarter turn, angle them out from the original. You want to put them in, line them up, stick it in, and faux show. Next, we'll take care of this silver strip that goes across the back here. You gotta be very careful as it can break. And make certain when you're going underneath, you make sure you don't break the area around the camera. It gets very weak around there or around the plate lights. Now, clean it up, stick it in. We moved over the gaskets from the clips on the original just so it lines up just a little bit better. And do the rear skid plate. You would just have to take down a couple of screws. Once again, they're quarter turn screws here and here, and then it'll just drop down. Here's a little trick how to remove emblems without scratching the car. Just roll up a towel, get it as close to the emblem as you can, and you use it like a lever. Boom. Now we got the original emblem off, got just enough to line her up. Let's put on the new black one. Get some firm pressure for about 30 seconds. Time to take off the silvers. Before we jack it up, we just want to loosen up the lugs on it. This one is equipped with wheel locks, so we put the wheel lock on. Then we just get it a little bit loose, and then we can cheat and use a uh, air ratchet. Jack points on Range Rover Sport are right here. One by the back wheel and one over by the front wheel. One thing you need to remember before jacking the car up in a Range Rover is you need to get inside it and use the air suspension to go all the way up into jack mode. Once the car tops out, then you're good to go jacking it. Now that we have these black rims on there, we're gonna to wanna to go ahead and tighten it with the breaker bar about a quarter turn. Another thing to remember, anytime you add new rims to a vehicle or change them, after 50 miles, you wanna make sure that you go back all around every lug and tighten it back up again. We're going to go ahead and take off the Sport HSE emblems off the rear here. In order to do that, you're going to need some painter's tape. That way you know exactly where to put the sticker after. Maybe a blade. New sticker. Yeah, buddy. Some turtle wax dashing glass. That'll help you take off the residue. And of course, a heat gun. Naturally, I'm sure you're shocked. I went with Ryobi, pretty awesome. First thing we wanna do is tape off the area 
and make sure we put this new sticker in exactly the right spot. I like to over tape as opposed to under taping. That way you have plenty of guidance on this. Looks like the new emblem is a little more substantial than the old emblem. So we're gonna go ahead and take off the bottom strip and that way it'll just come on right down. All else fails, grab the goo gone. So it looks like the new emblems have come one letter at a time here. So we're gonna try to outsmart it with some masking tape. See if we can maybe make ourselves our own little template here. Maybe we can get this masking tape to stick to the front of this enough that we can pull the back off and then just apply it all in one piece. Let's hope. Otherwise this is not gonna be very enjoyable. Nice. I'm gonna wanna get a nice even pressure on that. That looks amazing. All right, now we're gonna do the front lettering on Range Rover. Once again, preparation is gonna be key as far as the spacing and keeping the line straight. Looks like the replacement letters are in pretty good shape. Come in two pieces with a guide, which is very cool. And it appears it's gonna let me put it all on at once so we don't have to fabricate like we did on the back. Here we go, now that it's all clean, letters off, what we're gonna do is hit it with one final wipe down with a nice microfiber, and then we're gonna put on the letters. Cut that edge off, that way we can line this one up here. Show. Now for the back side, same thing. Remove the letters, stick them on. So to try a little something out here on the back. I'm gonna use a little dental floss, see if we can get a little bit closer so there's not as much adhesive to take off. Time to get the lettering on. For the fog light covers, we opted to get the kind that just goes right on top of it with some two-sided tape. To do make a set that you have to take the entire bumper off to do, that didn't make sense because it, It'd be a lot of work and the uh, you don't want to mess with it because the radiators are right behind there. Faux show. Faux show.